Welcome back to Greasy Boy Customs. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to talk about a project I finished a while back, but I never got the chance to film. Let's dive into my shoebox. So first things first, you deserve a proper introduction. This is my 1951 Ford four-door custom shoebox. Now, it didn't always look like this, but this is what I got now. She's my baby, and I love her. Let's take a look at the finer details, and we're going to dive into a little bit of the background on this car, where it came from, and where it's ended up now. In the beginning, there was a lonely man looking for things that he shouldn't buy on Facebook Marketplace, and this popped up. A couple months prior to me buying this car, I had a beautiful 46 Ford rat rod truck that I had built and was super proud of, and it was still one of my favorite. I'll show you a picture. The truck was really awesome, but unfortunately I got into a financial situation and I had to sell the truck. Well, then I was able to recoup months later and this popped up. So I had to buy it, but it didn't look like this when I bought it. So we found the car. We went to Ivanhoe, North Carolina and met with the buyer and he said, oh yeah, it's just down here, down a uh, path to the shop, which was a complete lie. It was a very small trail like for an ATV or UTV or dirt bikes or something like that. And we had uh, Rick's Chevrolet 2500 in a 16 foot car trailer and doing 90 degree turns on wooded paths that weren't designed to have vehicles was a little interesting, but we got back to it. Come to find out the ad was a little misleading because the car was disassembled. So the body was on the lift, the chassis was on the ground, the seats were in a different area, there was trim pieces over here, over there, there was a transmission just kind of laying in the cross member. But nonetheless, the price was amazing and it had a clear North Carolina title and I needed a project. So of course I bought it because I make rational decisions every day as an adult. Okay, that's that's a complete fucking lie, but whatever. That it, Still, it's here. It's awesome. So we got the car, and it was black. I'll show you in this picture right here. I posted the picture because I was so proud to bring my baby home, and then a good friend of mine, Bernie Fox, messaged me, and he's like, how'd you get my shoebox? So apparently... The gentleman that I'm talking about, I actually played in a band with him called Motor Billy, and then he's had a bunch of hot rods himself, and he used to own that shoebox before the gentleman I bought it from, so oddly enough, I ended up with a friend's car, you know, through various other people, which was cool too. I wasn't crazy about the black spray paint, so the first thing we did is sand it down, we got the body bolted on the chassis, and then the figuring came out. What are we going to do for an engine, a transmission? What are we going to do? Are we going to chop it? Are we just going to replace the glass? Are we going to paint it? Well, then my budget came in. So what we have here for the drivetrain is a 351 Windsor and a Ford FMX three-speed transmission. Now, what made me decide to go with this 351 Windsor is a friend of mine, Aaron, had found it through a mutual friend. and It was a killer deal. When I got it, it had the fuel-injected intake from the late 80s, early 90s on it. We just assumed that's what it was. So I cleaned up the engine and we uh, checked the oil and everything in it. It didn't look like it had been abused. There was no metal in there. We thought we were good. Put the engine in it, put the transmission in it. Okay, everything's ready to rock and roll. Then we moved on to the suspension. Now I'll put a link to another video in here. I'll put it right up here. And there's a link to Village Customs YouTube video where me and him teamed up and we knocked out the S10 conversion on the front of this car. We took an S10 clip, welded it on here, made it a little bit easier to bag, and I also like the availability of the parts and the steering and suspension itself works just fine. Not knocking the original 51 suspension because link pin is a great setup. I just wanted something a little bit newer and disc brakes, and this was a cheap option because it was free, so that's even better. Now for the rear axle, we went with a Ford 8.8 .8 disc brake rear end which also worked out just well, and a two-link air ride suspension. You think that's the end of the saga of the drivetrain? Well, it's not. Let me tell you another story. So we got the engine in, the transmission in, we got the front clip on there, we got the rear suspension in, air ride all the way around, disc brakes all the way around. Cool, we're rolling right along, right? Everything's good. We got all the black paint sanded off of it. Had this cool teen green 
natural looking patina underneath it so we just left it so now it comes time to ratchet the beaver and i want to drive my car i stayed up with the help of some of my friends for three days with almost no sleep to try to get this thing done so i could take it to ratchet the beaver the first test drive i did in this car was with no windshield at night and it was sleeting outside it was still amazing and i wouldn't have it any other way but you know nonetheless we go to load it on the trailer because I haven't had enough time to test drive it to put any miles on it. And as I'm getting ready to load it on the trailer, boom, transmission blows up. Done. Just leaking everywhere, slipping its ass off. Toast. Okay, great. So I go to the show. We have fun. Next year comes around, right? Okay, this time I'm ready. I got my transmission rebuilt. We're going to be good. So at the time, my girlfriend was living in Myrtle Beach. So I had a free place to stay, right? Cool, I'm going to drive to her house. I'm going to enjoy the trip for the weekend. Nope, that, that wasn't going to happen. Something had to go wrong, and it did. As I was driving down there, working out a few of the kinks, everything was going pretty smooth, aside from finding a leak in my fuel tank and overfilling at the station and making a huge puddle everywhere. But then it got a little bit deeper. That's when we ran into another problem. When I got to Myrtle Beach, all my oil pressure whoo, disappeared. Engine started ticking and smoking, and when I got to my girlfriend's house, there was a trail of oil behind me and oil dripping off the back bumper. The motor had ceased to be. So we borrowed a truck, we borrowed a trailer, we got it back home. I ripped the engine out of this thing, tear it apart, find out two things, one good, one bad. The good, this is actually a 1969 351 Windsor, which is spectacular. Bad is whoever reassembled this engine last time put the connecting rods in the wrong spots facing the wrong ways, which caused the rod bearings to not be oiled properly. There's a chamfer that needs to be facing a certain direction at the end where it goes around the crankshaft and some of those were backwards. They also had a bunch of worn out parts and I should have known better. This is what happens when you buy used things. So take the engine out, we get it bored. This thing's actually bored 60 over, which is really pushing it with a 351 Windsor. Uh, there are a little bit of heating issues every now and then, but that was expected. Uh, we got it all built back together, and this time we put a uh, new carburetor on it, and everything worked great, and drove 3,000 miles, right? Fine. Well, then I had to upgrade it again. So, I put fuel injection on it. put Fitec fuel injection on it. That changed some other things. Now when you go in the trunk, there's a fuel cell. Yay. Oh, well, I can still put some stuff back here. Let's talk about the interior. We got dolphin gauges. I reused existing pots that were here. Uh, I got a cheap wish.com Bluetooth radio and I got four gauges and valves for my air ride. Automatic shifter. Uh, it's a knockoff version of a low car American shifter company or something. Ah, uh, they're pieces of shit. Don't buy them. I keep buying them though because they're cheap. Now, as far as seating goes, we got the original back seat. We got some random buckets from Josh's shed. I still don't have any idea what they're from. Maybe a Saturn or something. Our steering goes, we got the stock steering wheel and we've got the column adapted to an S10 steering box on the S10 front suspension. No crazy horsepower, but she will spin a tire. She gets on down the road just fine. Nice and comfortable, even with manual steering. Not a problem at all, really don't have to fight it. One of the limitations this car has is because I went with a three-speed transmission, that Ford FMX transmission, which is really expensive to rebuild, by the way, uh, I had to go with kind of a crappy gear ratio. So I've only got like a 275 gear ratio or something like that in this uh, Ford 88 Explorer rear end. So off the line, not crazy power, but I can cruise at highway speeds comfortably. At 60 to 65 miles an hour, I'm doing around 2,000 RPM, which is fine. A truth that very few hot rodders and mechanics will tell you is that their personal projects are never done. This thing has become my family truckster, very reminiscent of the Griswold sweet-ass station wagon. So that's gonna wrap up the quick look at my car. Now, I love this thing and I drive it as often as possible. It's a fun car and being a four door, I've got room to put music equipment in the back if I have a gig with a band. I can also haul around my family or my buddies and we can go out places and do things and still enjoy ourselves comfortably. We do have more plans for the future because like I said before, it's never finished, is it? 
So we still got to do door panels and a center console and some inner fenders, but that's nothing that keeps it from driving. Now that I've shown you mine, tell me about yours. If you got a car that maybe she's a little ugly, but you love her, feel free to drop a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, happy hot rodding.